first of all, it's fascinating to think about this context uh, in terms of uh, evolving architectures. So I've uh, studied Tesla Autopilot for a long time. It's one particular implementation of an AI system that's operating in the real world. I find it fascinating because of the scale at which it's used out in the real world. And uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that system much, but you know, Andre Karpathy leads that team on the machine learning side. And uh, there's a multitask uh, network, multi-headed network where there's a core, but it's trained on particular tasks and there's a bunch of different heads that are trained on that. Is there some lessons from evolutionary computation or neuroevolution that could be applied to this kind of multi-headed beast that's operating in the real world? Yes, it's a very good problem for neuroevolution. Uh, and the reason is that when you have multiple tasks, um, they support each other. Uh, so let's say you're learning to classify X-ray images uh, to different pathologies. So you have one task is to classify um, uh, this disease and another one, this disease, and another one, this one. And when you're learning from one disease, uh, that forces certain kinds of internal representations and embeddings, um, and they can serve as a helpful starting point for the other tasks. Mm. So you are combining the wisdom of multiple tasks into these representations. And it turns out that you can do better in each of these tasks when you are learning simultaneously other tasks. Yep than you would by one task alone. Which is a fascinating idea in itself, yeah. Yes, and, and people do that all the time. I mean, you use knowledge of domains that you know in new domains, uh, and, and certainly neural networks can do that. Where neural evolution comes in is that, um, what's the best way to combine these tasks? Now there's architectural design that allow you to decide where uh, and how the, the um, embeddings, the internal representations are combined, and how much you combine uh, them. Uh, and uh, there's quite a bit of research on that, and, and, and my team, Elliot Meyerson's worked on that. Um, in particular, like what is a good internal representation that supports multiple tasks? Uh, and we're getting to understand how that's constructed and what's in it, uh, so that it, it is in a space that supports multiple different heads, like you said. Um, and and that I think is fundamentally how biological intelligence works as well. Uh, you don't build a representation just for one task. You try to build something that's general, not only so that you can do better in one task or multiple tasks, but also future tasks and future challenges. So you learn the, learn the structure of, of the world um, and, and that helps you uh, in all kinds of future, future challenges. And so you're trying to design a representation that will support an arbitrary set of tasks in a particular sort of class of problem. Yeah, and, and also it turns out, and that's, again, the surprise that Elliot found was that those tasks don't have to be very related. You know, you can learn to do better vision by learning language or better language by learning about DNA structure. Mm -hmm. you no, know, somehow the what? world... <laughs> yeah, it rhymes. <laughs> the world rhymes, even if yes. it's very, uh, very disparate fields. 